Wild Brute Bernard will be there going against Donnie Gilbert. Texas Dave Breck will be there taking on Jim Tucker, plus other exciting matches. That's on uh, Thursday night, June the 30th at 8.15 p.m. in Campobello, South Carolina at John and Jason's Jamboree in Campobello. And Chief J. Eagle, this should be an exciting match when you and Josh Winterhawk here team to go against the rough and tough uh, twosome of uh, Hard Rock Johnson and Handsome Johnny Savage. That's right, Savage and Hard Rock. I got a partner. He's not just a partner. He's a friend. He knows what you've been doing. You're doubling up on me, and we're coming to Campobello for one thing, and that's to defeat Hard Rock Johnson and Johnny Savage. Well, Josh Winterhawk, one thing for sure, Chief J. Eagle here has been looking for a partner. He has you in his corner come Thursday night, the 30th of June. How do you feel about teaming with none other than J. Eagle? Well, I'm really looking forward to it, and he was right about them uh, jumping up on him and uh, getting him from behind and everything like that, and I just feel that it's not right for somebody to do something like that, and I'm here to help a friend out, an old friend of mine, and uh, we've been around together, and we've been working out, and we're getting ready for this match. We've been watching them and tapings and stuff like that, and uh, I believe we can beat them. Well, Chief J. Eagle, uh, I guess this is the first time that you've teamed with Josh Winterhawk, but certainly he is a good tag team partner and I should say there should be plenty of action in this match. That's right Charlie I've been I've been working out like Winterhawk said with him what we're doing is we're putting true grit in the boy and when we come to Camp Abella, Hard Rock you and Savage be ready because we ain't coming to play marbles. Well wrestling fans this is one that you don't want to miss make your plans now get your advance tickets they're on sale at John and Jason's for a big exciting AWF championship wrestling card on Thursday night June the 30th, the wild man from Canada, Brute Bernard, will be there. He'll be going against Don Gilbert. Plenty of fast-moving, paced action on Thursday night, the 30th of June, at John and Jason's in Campobello, South Carolina. Get your tickets and make your plans and be there. Well, wrestling fans, on your screen right there, you see the new AWF TV championship belt that is now held by none other than the fellow to my right, Chief J. Eagle. Chief, you won this match over in Lynchburg, Virginia in a tournament, isn't yes. that right? Yes, sir, Charlie. I'm real excited. I had a 16-man tournament down there, and I came out on top. I'm real excited about it. Well, let me say this. This is one of the finest-looking belts that we've seen uh, within the AWF or any other wrestling promotion in a long, long time. And I know that you're going to be real anxious to defend this. But have you had any challenges from any of the uh, top participants uh, within the AWF? Well, yes, Charlie. The, the challenges are rolling in. Even from first day of being champion, the challenges are starting to come in. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, in the match that we're about to see you in is a wild mainly of a lumberjack match where I have never seen nothing like it in my entire wrestling career where we had... Uh, about uh, 15, 18 people involved in a lumberjack match, and uh, your partner was injured, the Crusaders' partner was injured, uh, several guys were really injured with uh, back injuries, neck injuries. Uh, in fact, one guy was bitten by this uh, uh, Kenya, and it's really something like I've never seen before. What is your feeling toward this new man, and now he has a manager, Dr. Cato? Well, this this Kenya, he uh, talking about him biting a man. I was the the man he bit, and uh, he wasn't supposed to be involved in the match. He's just around the ring as a lumberjack, and uh, he did bite me, and um, he had no business. He had no business right. participating in the match. That's exactly uh, right, Charlie. Along those lines, Cato has not been officially. Uh, he are Kenya officially barred, but they are on a sort of a probation period. Well, I talked with some of the officials within the AWF this morning, Red, by telephone, and they are reviewing this particular tape that we're getting ready to look at right now in a minute. And they are not pleased at all at what went on. I was the local AWF representative as matchmaker and promoter there that night. I did the only thing that I thought was right by trying to even the thing up when it got out of hand. 
and Kenya was, every time a guy would come out on his side of the ring, he was slugging at him, he was biting him, he was kicking him, he was gouging him, and I did the only thing that I knew, how to even it up by putting the uh, good guys over on the side where Kenya was, and that's when it broke loose. Kitty barred the door, and I have never in my life in 23 years in professional wrestling ever saw anything any wilder than this. Now, if you folks missed it last week, you're going to get a chance to look at it again just in a minute. So this will be something that uh, if you haven't seen it, when you see this uh, match, then you're going to have something to write home to Mama or Papa about because it is really wild. Speak excuse well, me just a minute. Speaking of writing, uh, <clears throat> if, the, if the fans, uh, if, when you review this match, if you will if you'll write the station you're watching along the AWF network and let them know your feelings to where you think Dr. Cato or Kenya should be uh, barred uh, from the AWF commission or whatever, then drop a line to the station you're watching. And we'd appreciate it. Go ahead. Uh, okay, Chief. I just want to say, not taking away from Miss Kenya, but those assassins in the ring, they was a handful. And without having to worry about Kenya on the outside biting me and my partner Don Gilbert, which, which they did injure, and Don's out at this time, but he'll be back. And we're going to be getting back together, and I'm looking to take Don on as a partner again and go after this Kenya that was in on this hurting him and this Dr. Cato bringing these guys in. Well, one thing, uh, too, uh, Jay, that we'd like to mention, when we say this was wild, you're going to see another man within the AWF who uh, holds with his uh, brother the uh, AWF uh, Southern Tag Team Championships, and that is uh, Jim and Gene Tucker. And uh, Jim Tucker was out there and had his shoe in his hand, and he was actually hitting the guys over the head with it. Yes, that's and, what I uh, said. And there was all type of foreign objects involved. I, like I say, I'd never seen anything like it. It was more like a brawl than a wrestling match, Red, and I don't like to see these things, and I'm sure the fans don't like to see them when they get out of hand like they did. Uh, on last week's show. But right now, let's pick up that match uh, in its entirety and see, and let you see again exactly what we're speaking of when Kenyu gets involved. They're putting him put back in, back but... Uh, this is a lumberjack match. No man is to leave the ring before the match is over with. The lumberjacks outside the ring will throw any participant back inside any way he can, whether it is by his own steam or by the seat of his pants. First of all, from Oklahoma, weighing in at 214 pounds, Chief J. Eagle. At 200. What is this? 33 pounds. Uh, this wild man's trying to get back in there. He don't want to just be a lumberjack. He wants to go at it. Is Don Gilbert and their opponents at 597 pounds from parts unknown, the team of the masked assassins, number one and number two. This is a lumberjack match. Okay, Mr. Babs, the match is uh, underway here. And Mr. Cato is back uh, at ringside with us here. Oh, look at that takedown. Jay Eagle put on one of the assassins. Were they one or number two? These guys are identical to me, and I'm, I'm fairly uh, sure they're identical to the fans here in the auditorium tonight, which we have a very good crowd. Well, you know, Red, I really feel sorry for the Indian and Gilbert if they're if they decide to leave the ring on the same side that they